Next on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Eight minutes before eight is the time now. While we are focusing on these rather gloomy headlines or even predictions about the problems with the NHS possibly running until Easter, we must look at the other big story in town, which, of course, the rail strikes, which we've also covered, and we'll look at in more detail. And to get the latest on that, let's bring into the conversation Transport Secretary and Conservative MP Mark Harper, who joins me now. Thank you for joining um, the show. Secretary of State, since we last spoke last year, has any progress been made and what level of conversations have you had with the relevant unions? Good morning. Uh, good morning and a happy new year to you, happy new Nick. Year, Mr. Um, well, look, we we have actually. So the meetings were took place between the rail unions and the rail minister uh, and the employers uh, in December, uh, mid December, uh, and conversations have continued since. Uh, we've got more meetings scheduled next week. I mean, I'd much rather, frankly, those meetings were taking place this week instead of strikes. I'd much rather we got. Uh, the RMT off of the picket line and back round the negotiating table sooner rather than later. There's a fair and reasonable offer on the table, uh, but we've got to hammer out the detail on reform in the rail industry to get some of those outdated working practices resolved uh, and the pay deal sorted out between the employers, the train operating companies and Network Rail and the unions. And uh, we're doing what we can to facilitate that. Um, and I hope we can get these uh, this dispute resolved as soon as we can. But have you given any ground at all? Because that sounds pretty much word for word what you said when we spoke last month, Secretary of State. Well, well look, we, we, when I took this job, I made sure that I met the trade union leaders, changed the tone of the conversation. I made sure there was a new and improved and I think fair and reasonable pay offer. And what has changed is two of the trade unions involved with Network Rail have accepted that pay offer. Um, the RMT recommended to its members not to accept it. And even, even there with those members were recommended refusal, a third of them actually voted in favour of that pay offer. So I think we need to continue those conversations. But you know, any pay offer has to be fair, not just to the people that work in the industry, but also has to be fair to the fair payer and the taxpayer who's put a huge amount of investment into the rail industry over the last couple of years. And it's got to, we've got to balance all of those things out. And there isn't a bottomless pit of taxpayers' money. So at Europe, we're only going to get this resolved if we hammer it out around the negotiating table. And that's where I want to see the unions and the employers as soon as we can. Of course, there could be another point of conflict emerging. Unions are expected to take legal action against anti-strike laws being prepared by Rishi Sunak and senior ministers, which should include you. Amid reports, the curbs will be announced when Parliament returns later this month. Is that true? That we're going to hear more about new legislation, Secretary of State? Well, well look, we, we have already introduced legislation on purely on the transport sector. The Prime Minister's looking at whether that should be um, introduced more widely. And it's about making sure you have minimum service levels uh, if there's strike action and obviously wh when a decision is taken that announcement will be made in parliament in the usual way but i think look from from my perspective the most important thing with the rail disputes isn't about the service that people get on a strike day it's about making sure we get this dispute resolved and that we have both reform of some of those outdated practices so that we get a better rail service um, and we get a fair and reasonable pay deal sorted out uh, that there is one on the table at the moment as i said two but, trade unions have accepted it and i want to get which, the rmt so off the, the picket line and back around the table that's the tssa is it which, yeah, at the TSSA and Unite also, um, two of the, the ones that have fewer members. Because I know Dan's left are on strike later offer. this week as well, aren't they? So there's, yes, considerable, they are. there's a considerable body of opinion against the deal, one has to say that, Secretary of State. Yeah, look, it, it's about, look, I, I don't blame unions wanting more money, but it has to be balanced about what's fair to the travelling public who pay fares, what's what's fair to the taxpayer who've put a huge amount of investment into the rail industry, and what's fair to the people that work in the industry. And we've got to balance all of those things. There's not a bottomless pit of taxpayers' money. But ultimately, we're only going to get the risk resolved if the unions sit around the negotiating table with the employers. That's what I and the rail minister are trying to sort out. That's why there are more meetings scheduled for next week. And I hope they prove successful. Well, in indeed, and, and all my listeners I think would support that. Just lastly, noting you chaired the COVID recovery group, if I can move you to a slightly different area. Of course. Regarding China and the testing, it's been reported that arrivals into the country from China will only be requested to take voluntary testing and the positive tests won't be required to quarantine. If that's the case, what's the point? 
Well, look, there's a couple of things here. First of all, I think this is very um, consistent with all the things that I said previously. This is about a country, China, which isn't sharing the health data with the global health system that we expect everybody to do. So that's why we've put this temporary precautionary measure in place as China opens up its borders. We're doing two things. We're requiring people that fly from China to have a pre-departure test. So they've got to show that they are negative before they get on that flight. Then when they get to the United Kingdom, we'll, the UK Health Security Agency will take uh, a sample of passengers and test them. That's so that we get that information into our health system and we can track the, the virus that's coming from China. That, I think, is a very sensible, balanced proposition, which I think helps keep people in the UK safe, uh, but doesn't put any restrictions on how people in the UK are able to operate. But were I to arrive from China and test positive for COVID, having, I hear what you say, I got on the plane and I was clear, but I land at Heathrow and I now developed COVID, I don't have to self-isolate. No, because what we're doing is we're collecting that information for surveillance purposes. But look, one in 45 people, Nick, in the United Kingdom have got COVID at the moment. Um, currently. People coming currently. Into, my currently. Um, and we manage COVID now by making sure we've got a very high level of vaccination. That's why people who are at risk, uh, older members of the community, for example, should make sure they get their uh, fourth booster shot this winter. Uh, that's how we protect people from COVID. That's our primary line of defence. The policy for arrivals from China is primarily about collecting information that the Chinese government are not sharing with the international community. We'd rather they share the data. If they did that, we wouldn't have to do this surveillance testing in the first place. Would you be wearing a mask again if you developed any kind of symptoms or felt you had a cough or some kind of chesty cough, whatever it might be, Secretary of State? Well, I think the UK Health Security Agency's advice, which is that if you're ill, um, you should first of all, you should stay at home. If you think you've got COVID or you've got flu, actually, the most sensible thing to do is to not go out and spread it. Um, if you do go out, clearly wearing a mask is very sensible if you're ill. Um, but we manage these uh, illnesses now by vaccination. So people should get vaccinated for COVID. Yes. They should also get a flu vaccination. We've seen very high levels of flu this winter. So if you're uh, eligible, you should get your flu vaccination as well. That will help keep pressure off of the health so, service. So, so you would wear a mask if you developed a cough on the way home or whatever it might be? If I, if I were ill, if I yes. thought I had COVID or I had yes. flu, actually the most sensible thing to do is to stay at home and not spread it. Right. And if you have to travel, is yes, follow that sensible health advice. Lastly, one of your colleagues, Brendan Clark-Smith, who is the Conservative MP for Bassett Law in Nottinghamshire, has told firefighters on £32,000 using food banks to learn how to budget. He says emergency workers using the facility was, quotes, the most ridiculous, close quotes, thing he had ever heard. Do you concur? £32,000 enough that you don't need to use food banks? Well, look, I wouldn't um, put things in the, the way that he has. I think, look, People are under pressure at the moment because we've seen we've got high levels of inflation, partly driven by high energy prices. That's why the government's put a lot of support in place. I don't know what individual family circumstances are. What the government's committed to doing is making sure that we drive down inflation, we get inflation under control, and that people working in the public sector get fair and reasonable pay offers, um, which is why where there, where there are independent pay review bodies, we've accepted the recommendations. But someone on 32 thousand pounds should they be using availing themselves of a food bank do you imagine Secretary of State? Well, look, I don't know what individual circumstances are for people, but that's a, a salary that's above the median income uh, across the economy as a whole. Um, and we're trying to make sure that people that work in public services are on fair, have fair and reasonable pay offers that are consistent with what people across the economy are getting. Grateful for your time. Happy New Year to Mr Harper. Thanks for appearing on the show. And good luck, of course, with the talks. Transport Secretary Mark Harper appearing here on LBC. We've got Mick Lynch, by the way, coming up later on the show on the other side, of course. It's one minute after eight. Let's get the news. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, rail workers have begun their first strikes of the new year.